I think we are probably only a few decades away from reaching this point that I've called longevity escape velocity, where we are able to keep people indefinitely in a youthful state of health, a state of physical and mental function that is just the same as young adults today. That state of health will, as a side effect, cause people to live on average as long as young adults would if their risk of death per year didn't go up. And since the risk of death per year that people have in young adulthood in the West these days is already less than one in a thousand, we get a four-digit lifespan out of that calculation, out of that you know, calculation of half-life, if you like. Um, the question then is, how, what, what does this mean, this longevity escape velocity concept, technologically? What it means is not that we would have therapies that completely eliminate all of the types of damage that the body does to itself, but rather that, that we would eliminate most of that damage, thus buying ourselves time, another few decades maybe, to improve those therapies to get a little bit closer to that goal so that we could re-rejuvenate the same people even though they're chronologically older and so on and so forth. The reason I call it escape velocity is because it's a finite rate of progress in actually, actually improving the comprehensiveness of the therapies but it has an infinite consequence. It's an asymptotic consequence. So it's just in the same way that if you fire a bullet into the air at you know, 100 miles an hour, it goes this amount of height. If you do it at 200 miles an hour, it goes maybe three times higher, and so on. And eventually, there's a finite rate at which it'll carry on going forever. OK, for this audience, which is a nice visionary audience, perhaps I should actually tell the real truth, which is that this whole four-digit lifespan thing is completely conservative. Um, one thing that's already come up in the discussion of risk aversion is that it's pretty much guaranteed that as we make progress against our number one cause of death as it currently stands, namely aging, we will care more about making progress against other causes of death. And, well, to just cut to the mathematical chase, the answer is that there is no actual half-life anymore. That the curve, our uh, radioactive decay curve, eventually, it, it, it's asymptotic to zero. Eventually, all the atoms decay, right? The curve that you get if you do this calculation is not asymptotic to zero anymore. Most people will live literally forever in this scenario.